Today is February 16th, 2024. I'm David Berlin. This is the Blockchain Journal podcast coming to you from a Boston Blockchain Association event being held at Suffolk University in Boston. And standing with me is Tanya Vasilyeva, who is with uh, Baisley and Partners. Looking at her badge here, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot to say because I had a hard time pronouncing her name. But uh, Tanya, thanks very much for joining us here on the Blockchain Journal podcast. Um, thank you so much, David. Um, all right, so yeah, that's all right. Don't worry. We're just gonna we're just gonna have a conversation. You know what I want to do is I'm, I'm I'm literally going around and talking to uh, the different attendees to the event to find out what it is they're doing in the blockchain industry, what their interest was in coming to this event, and um, I happened to eavesdrop on one of your conversations, and I heard you saying that you are a regulatory attorney in Europe. So uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, I'm dealing with uh, regulatory issues in Europe, uh, with uh, classification of different financial promises uh, which uh, blockchain companies issue towards their audience, and uh, with obtaining licenses in different countries to comply with Mika. Okay, so Mika or Mika, I think I hear it pronounced multiple different ways. That is the overarching regulation that so far has been established in the European Union, and um, and so. Uh, you are now are you when you do this work that you're doing you're doing it on behalf of other companies that have to comply with those regulations right um, I'm doing it on behalf of uh, blockchain companies which um, uh, promise something outside of technology uh, which promise some financial things to audience like for example some earnings uh, on uh, uh, investments to decentralized uh, autonomous organizations or different things like this and so you have to stay very um, on top of what's happening, particularly given the uh, changing landscape of all the regulation. Uh, are these companies only operating in one country or are they operating across all of Europe? Uh, it's uh, very difficult to operate in one country in Europe. So normally they operate in several countries. And uh, they establish uh, one headquarter in one of a company, one of the countries, yeah, but uh, they uh, target audience in uh, different uh, European countries. Okay, I'm not a lawyer like you are, <laughs> but my understanding of the regulations in Europe when it comes to blockchain and crypto is that you've got MICA, the overarching uh, regulations be set up uh, by the European Union, but then if you go to each of the different companies, uh, c companies, each of the different countries, they themselves have their own regulations, some more than others. An example of that might be um, you have uh, different laws in the UK regarding crypto than you have in Germany or Luxembourg. Switzerland. Some countries are a little more pro-crypto than others. Meanwhile, you still have this MICA thing in the background. So how does that work? Um, you're absolutely right. And I think MICA will simply simplify this because before MICA, we had the situation when in one country, it was completely gray area. For example, in Czech Republic. In Czech Republic, uh, you can do... Um, That's where you're based? Yes. Okay. You can do most of the things with crypto without licensing uh, and uh, only um, uh, things which are classified as uh, investment things. Uh, uh, you shall uh, obtain license. Uh, but uh, there are countries like, for example, Germany. Uh, which uh, allowed particular things, uh, but uh, regulated uh, uh, by Bafin, uh, the regulatory body, uh, diff separate things, like for example, custodian things. And uh, you had to, uh, you had to, you had to um, navigate all this difficult landscape. And Mike just simplify this, and Mike would allow allow you to get license in one country and uh, to operate based on this license in several countries. Uh, so you don't need just to. Uh, uh, create some uh, different regulatory approaches in different countries. You need to create one strategy. Oh, so uh, I was under the impression that if a country had its own laws around crypto or blockchain, that those laws would take precedence over the MICA laws. Are you saying it's the other way around? MICA takes precedence over the national jurisdictions? Uh, uh, not really like this. Uh, MICA will cover all these uh, questions which uh, were governed by national law. So MICA will be m much wider than national law before. So uh, MICA will be bad for uh, companies uh, which um, uh, operated within gray area and uh, hoped uh, just to stay there. But it will be good for uh, companies which uh, wanted to comply and wanted to unify everything. All right. So that's interesting. I uh, that, that's new to me, and uh, that's very interesting. How do you 
view, you're in Europe working on crypto and blockchain. I can speak for a lot of people here in the US and one of the major concerns is that the blockchain chain train is leaving the station and you've got a lot of very um, uh, uh, um, pro crypto countries or pro blockchain countries in the European Union and elsewhere in the world, uh, for example, India, uh, Singapore, and, and they're moving forward. And so when somebody in the US sees that, one of the concerns is that the US is going to get left behind while all these other countries move forward. You know, they're getting all of their, you know, they're just getting everything in place that needs to be in place from a regulatory point of view so that there's some regulatory certainty for all the different companies that want to set up business. So that's the view we take, some of us take here in the US, we look at Europe and we say, oh boy, they're just going to keep going and we're just going to be stuck in molasses as long as the conversation keeps going the way it's going in, in Washington, DC. What's your view of the US? Are you guys like looking at it and saying, oh, well, okay, we've, we've got an advantage here. We're going to put the, you know, we're going to put our pedal, our foot on the gas pedal and, and floor it, try to kind of take, create a, uh, more of a, a competitive advantage, or are you also waiting for the U.S. to kind of get going? Um, I think um, there is some some point which is uh, which some some incorrect views. So some companies they think that, uh, or some even countries may think that they can get advantage advantage out of this. But the situation is that uh, blockchain regulation, like any financial regulation, has uh, two layers: uh, the layer where company is incorporated and the layer where target audience uh, is uh, situated. Uh, so even if uh, uh, let's say Switzerland or Liechtenstein uh, will get uh, more companies uh, uh, to incorporate their headquarters there. Uh, they will not be able to get all the profits into their country because uh, to enter U.S. market, uh, companies anyway will need to comply with U.S. regulation and so on because of the second layer. Uh, in the U.S. market uh, is, uh, I think, true delicious uh, for companies just to live uh, <laughs> like this uh, without uh, without like many many uh, numerous attempts uh, attempts to get into this sure just about any company wants to tap into the US market because it's a big market with a lot of people uh, and so um, uh, and, and particularly when it comes to blockchain there's a ton of people in the US that are interested in blockchain and cryptocurrency so yeah it's a as you say a delicious market I, I, I totally agree with that well uh, uh, Tanya thank you very much for joining us uh, on the blockchain journal podcast I uh, wish you the best of luck uh, while you're here in Boston and um, you know uh, hopefully those companies that are uh, that you're consulting with in Europe uh, appreciate your understanding of the whole regulatory landscape Thank you so much. Okay, that's it. If you want to get the full transcript of this or you want to get in touch with Tanya, we're going to throw some QR codes up on this video and then uh, you can click those and get in touch with her, maybe uh, get her advice on something. Uh, if you want to get more of our video content, then just go to the Blockchain Journal uh, channel on YouTube. Easy to find. Just search Blockchain Journal on YouTube. Or you can come to blockchainjournal.com where all of our videos are posted as well as the full transcript uh, text of those interviews. So thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you at the next video.